Somebody can lift your hand to heaven and say, I'm so glad for the blood of Jesus that he loved me enough, amen, to die for me, amen. Thankful for the cross this morning, thankful for his grace, his love, his mercy, and uh, that he's called each and every one of us to follow him. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Aren't you glad that it's just not, it doesn't have to, uh, you have to pay money and jump through hoops and do all this stuff. The, the Bible says that he just loved us, amen, where we are. Come on, somebody, amen. And he, he just receives us, the Bible says, and he and, uh, calls us his own. And so blank, thankful for that. And uh, really, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this today, uh, really because I'm kind of beside myself. Amen. Our oldest son and Tyler and Liz, they had a baby this week. So we're grandparents for the first time. Amen. And uh, so we're excited in a, in a little while, we'll be able to meet little Henry James. And then, uh, you know, and so we have to introduce ourselves a little bit to say, I'm Pops, there's Gigi. And so, amen. We're getting ready to get into this chapter of our lives and we're excited about it. And uh, so amazing, so awesome. And uh, thank God for new life, amen. Thank God for family and, and uh, his plan for life and his plan for family. And so excited about that. I uh, wanted to thank all those who um, showed up yesterday for our work day. We had a work day downstairs and we were able to rip up the carpet and do some other things. And uh, then we have a work night tomorrow night. There's a few uh, people coming to that. So I wanted to thank those uh, that came and gave up their Saturday morning for that. Thank you so much. And uh, we got a lot done and, and uh, part of the remodel downstairs, it's happening, it's, it's moving forward. And we're excited about the Valley kids uh, getting their own space having their own space and being able to call it their own, really. And uh, it's going to look great. So I'm just thankful for everyone that came and showed up for that. And uh, God bless you for that. Amen. Today, as we get into the Word, and I, I want to just uh, read Scripture and open up in prayer, I want to pray especially for those who are sick today. I know there's a lot of people out that are sick, and, and uh, even there's a uh, someone in the hospital today, and uh, I don't know if they're watching us this morning, but uh, we want to pray for you. We believe that God is going to heal your body, touch you, and our heart is uh, with you today. He can't be with us today, but our heart is with you, and so we want to pray. And uh, I don't know if you know anybody that's sick or maybe that just really has uh, facing a difficult situation in their health. Let's believe God for the impossible today. Let's believe God for complete healing. Let's believe God, amen, because he is the great physician. Anybody? Come on, he's the great, he's the great cardiologist. He's the, I mean, he's the great physician. Amen. He can do it all. And so we're going to believe God for that. Amen. So I got, so we got the young kids in here today and, uh, this morning and, uh, Valley kids, the, uh, school age was canceled. So you're going to be up here today. Hopefully you're going to be taking notes as much as you can, drawing, whatever, drawing a picture of me. I don't know what you're doing or whatever, but, uh, we're excited to have you there today. I'm going to be careful what I say today. We're going to talk about relationships, but, um, wanted to throw something out before we pray. And that is, uh, of course, this next week is so we're going to experience a solar eclipse. And I know that uh, there's been a lot of, of uh, talk about this one seven years ago. There's a lot of talk about that one. And, uh, and, and if you've kind of been following any of the TikToks and some of the other things, uh, all the speculation, all the prophetic utterances, all those things that, you know, biblical tones there. And there's a lot of coincidences. We see that. But I just wanted to say this publicly, that we do not fear what's going to happen. We don't live in fear. Someone said, well, it's a, it's a sign that, that the end times. I said, great, Jesus is coming back, amen. I've been waiting for that for a long time, amen. Well, judgment's coming. All right, well, I have nothing to be afraid of because only those who are gonna be judged need to fear, amen. That's not us, amen, that's not me. And so I'm thankful for what God's doing in the earth. And if it happens by signs and wonders, I mean, how many know, it's funny because all these things happen, some of these things happen in our world and everybody's so freaked out about it, but I'm like, have you not read the book of Revelation? I mean, something's going to happen one way or the other. Something's going to happen. So we're not going to fear about it. We're not going to, as Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Some people are just like, oh my gosh, it's going to be the end of the world. Jesus coming back. Yes. That's amazing. If it happens, because that's what we've been waiting for. Amen. Amen. Come on. Instant death, instant glory. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can't Amen. It doesn't matter. So heaven's our home. We're not worried about what's going to happen in that sense, but please don't get freaked out and don't live by fear. How many know perfect love casts out fear? So this morning, maybe you've been a little 
uh, frustrated about it, maybe a little fearful about it, I want you to calm your heart this morning and just say, don't be afraid. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Let God handle what he's going to do. Amen. How many know he controls the moon and the stars and, and everything that happens anyways? It's in his hands. Amen. He's in control. And so, amen, I'm so thankful that uh, we have his word to give us confidence and assurance and peace this morning. Amen. That we are in his hands. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. Thank you for this privilege of coming into your house again today as a family, as Christians, as believers in Jesus, as followers of Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, that when we come together, great things happen. Amen. People get healed and encouraged and faith gets built and and, uh, we grow as a church. And I just thank you for that, Lord. But Father, our hearts today go to those that are sick and, and are with us today. And even though even some are in the hospital, we pray for them. I pray that, Lord, you would touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. They would be made whole by the power of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we can't do it in our power and our own strength. And, and, and medicine does great and it's wonderful, but it, it really can't do what you can do. And you can do a miracle. So I'm asking for a miracle for those that are listening today that are sick in their body. I pray for healing and wholeness and strength in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. You know, all of us are really kind of uh, really designed and created with a, a, a vacuum of love that we, 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 you know, lead love. We want to give love. And uh, this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about finding true love. And I want to just kind of zero in on a, a love story in the Bible out of Genesis 24 uh, of a young man and young woman by the name of Isaac and Rebecca. One of my favorite love stories in the Bible, amen, besides Adam and Eve. This was a great one. And I uh, wanted to pull some truth from that about how the, as, as, as Christians especially, we find true love. We find uh, relationships and we build relationships and we find love. And so if you turn with me to Genesis chapter 24, we're going to pick up the story actually at the end of the story and then we're going to go and pick it up and uh, follow that storyline through and find out what, what principles are here um, in finding true love. In Genesis chapter 24, this again... Um, Again, we're going to explain this, but in verse 63, I'm going to start kind of towards the end, verse 63. The Bible says that Isaac went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. He saw a caravan of camels approaching, and Rebekah was in that caravan. The Bible says in verse 64 that Rebekah also looked, and she saw Isaac. Their eyes met, and it was one of those moments, and the music started right there. And she got down from the camel, the Bible says, and she asked the servant who brought her, who is that man that is coming in the field coming to meet us? And he said, that's my master, the servant said. And, uh, and so the Bible says, so she took the veil and she covered her face and covered herself. And then the servant told Isaac that all that he had done and everything that he was asked to do was done. Verse 67, and Isaac brought Rebekah uh, into the tent of his mother Sarah and he married Rebekah. And so uh, the Bible says she became his wife and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about finding true love. We're going through the book of Proverbs and uh, we're doing the men's and women's uh, Bible study there in the book of Proverbs. And if you read the book of Proverbs, you know what it is. It's, it's Solomon writing to his son Rehoboam who will be the next king and he's uh, giving him a book of wisdom. And it's uh, oftentimes called a book of wisdom and folly. And uh, you'll see it contrast all through this book. But the first seven chapters are really about, and he stresses and emphasizes that it's about uh, relationships. And if you make bad choices, you're going to have consequences. That if you make good choices, you can have healthy relationships. And he talks about this all through the book of Proverbs, but especially in chapters 1 through 7. And he talks about, uh, especially as, as warning him as a man uh, against wrong relationships and what, what negative relationships would look like. But he also gives them a lot of principles about healthy relationships and finding true love. Amen. And so this morning, if you're single, whether you're old or young, uh, if someone said, well, I'm not going to get married yet. I mean, uh, you know, I don't need to hear about marriage today. I'm just, I'm still like in the prime of my life and I'm going to do the thing. That's, that's all right. But I think that these principles still apply. And so there's a lot of principles here that apply about finding true love that I want to share with you today. So whether you're young or old or single or and and just whatever, and you're not going to get married for a while, that's fine. Um, There's a few things that before we talk about finding true love, we've got to keep in perspective all through really uh, these conversations that we have and sermons that we teach about uh, love and God's love and relationships, um, courtship, marriage, dating, all that. 
is that God's way is the best way. And that God gives us a design and a pattern and principles for love. And the Bible says that God is love. And how many know if God is love, then he knows what he's talking about. Amen. And so he, this is the most important thing, to keep God's word and God's principles in front of you. And the second thing is, is that if we are to look at the world and the world system and the philosophies of the world, a world without God and that doesn't follow the teachings of the Bible and society that is led by uh, philosophy of man and, and what the Bible refers to as the world, the system of the world, we've got to say that that system is broken. And so we can't follow that system. How many know the Bible warns us is don't, be, don't follow the patterns of the world. Don't put up worldly principles to search for love. You, you can't do that because the Bible says in 1 John that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And all that is in the world is not of the Father, but is of the world, right? So how many know we got to go God's way? And we got to do it God's way. And so if you follow the patterns of the world, you're going you're gonna to have the results of man's philosophy of flesh and, and those things. Come on, somebody. But if you follow the Lord, you're going to have the results of, of the kingdom of God. You're going to have love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, gentleness. You're going to have healthy, awesome relationships, and you will find true love if you follow God's principles. Amen? Some of you know what it's like not to follow God's principles. You know the brokenness and, the, um, and what you've suffered and the abuse and the anguish that you've gone through and the years of pain that you've had to walk through because you didn't go God's way. How many can say, ouch, right? Come on, ouch to that. And, and so I don't know about you, but I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to do it God's way. And in, in 1 John also says this, that whoever does the will of the Father will abide forever. Whoever does it God's way will have successful, lasting love, lasting relationship, strong marriages, healthy children. Come on, somebody, amen. If we do it God's way, amen, we're going to have God's results. Is that true? So keep that in mind when we teach about these things, we talk about these things, because I don't know about you, but um, the Bible it, it makes it clear that the world without God doesn't know love. They don't really understand it. They can practice the principles of, of love and not know God, right? They can feel the effects uh, and emotions of love and not know God. Amen. But I don't know about you, but I want to have uh, the perfect love. I want to know true love. Amen. And so I want to follow God's way. Amen. The first thing we've got to see about finding true love and understand is that God's love for us is amazing. Amen. How many are thankful for God's love for you? Amen. And because God loves us so much, Psalms 84, 11 says, no good thing will God withhold from them who walk uprightly. I mean, God's not going to hold anything good back from you. Isn't that good? Amen. God wants to bless you. The Bible says that blessings chase the righteous down. They, they'll, they'll chase you down. Amen. Isn't that great? I love to hear that. Amen. But the Bible says curses will chase down those that don't know the Lord. Think about it. But I believe that God wants to give us the best. And you know, it's always the enemy, always the devil who paints a picture that God wants to give man a raw deal. He's always painted the picture that God wants to sell you short, that God somehow, uh, you know, God's going to take away your Friday nights. You're not going to have fun anymore. You're not going to be able to do this and this, and, and you've got to go the straight and narrow, and you're not going to be a normal person. Let me tell you something. That's just a lie, right? That's simply a lie because the enemy knows that if you get a hold of God's love, if you get a hold of life, if you get a hold of the Bible, amen, you're going to be the happiest, most successful, healthy person on earth. Amen. And, and he's nervous about that because a healthy person builds families. A healthy person builds relationships. Amen. A healthy person brings love and peace and unity to situ situations and not division and discourse and fighting. Is that right? Amen. So the devil knows that. Amen. That's why he wants to keep you from God's best. Amen. But I don't know about you, but ever since, amen, the very beginning, and then in Deuteronomy, we find that God's plan for mankind is to give you heaven on earth, days of heaven on earth. I, I kind of like that. It's pretty good. Amen. And so I want God's plan. And you know, it really starts with this. When you're finding true love, it always starts with God's love. Is that right? But there's a, a, a word love that's described in the Bible that you can only get when you know God. There's a love that you can experience that only experience if you know God. It's called agape love, right? That's Greek words agape. So there's different types of and, and meanings of love and eros and, 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 you know, there's a philios, which is where we get our, our you know, the word Philadelphia, bro, uh, city of brotherly love, which I'm not really sure about that. But anyways, 
brotherly love, right? Phileos, and that's that kindness and respect to humanity and other people, and everybody needs to have that, and everybody can practice that. But there's a word called agape love that you can only experience in Christ Jesus. It's a love that you and I share if you're a believer because we're one in Christ, because we're members of the body of Christ. We're, part of the, we're citizens of heaven together. We're part of the body of Christ. We have agape love. We've experienced the love of Christ between us. We are now brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. We are part of the what? Family of God. That's agape love. You cannot experience that love outside of Jesus Christ. You just can't. It's a special love. It's a unique love that I can call anyone from uh, different continents who are believers in Jesus' family. That's unique, isn't it? I can have that love. And there's something about the love that's in Jesus, amen, that starts with agape love. It's the Father's love. That's what it means. It's, it's the love that comes from your Creator, knowing Him as your Father, knowing Him as, as the intimate relationship with God Almighty. That's the agape love. It's brothers and sisters in Christ that, amen, that I can have this union with people that I really don't know, that I'm getting to know, amen, and we're brothers and sisters in Christ. It's agape love. And that's kind of where it starts. And that love that's in Christ is full of compassion. It's full of kindness. It's full of respect. It's full of purity. It's full of integrity and character. It's full of, come on, everything that, that love is supposed to be is in that love, agape love. That's where it starts. And so it starts with you and I loving one another as brother and sister. Come on, amen? As the family of God, not just a human being or a person, but now I can love you in a very unique way as the family of God, as, as someone who loves Christ and loves Jesus and walks with God, and wow, you're a believer too, amen? And so uh, uh, we can see that you can practice the principles of love and not know God. But the best thing is, is to know God and walk in love, right? Amen? So I don't know if you're out there today and you're, looking for love, and maybe you're kind of like in that old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places, but today you came to a good place, and we're going to teach you how to look for love, amen, in the good place. Let's look at Genesis chapter 24 and just go through this a little bit. Starting in verse, well, actually in verse 1 and 2, you'll see that Abraham said, and he looked at Isaac, and he said, you know what, I, I want to find a wife for my son. Now, when I share these principles this morning, I, I, I know and I take into account that the way they think, did things back then are different than the way that we do things now. I get it, right? Uh, a lot of times marriages were arranged or uh, girls were much younger then. And, and I, I get all that. And, and a lot of times they arrange marriages based because of, of social status or because of the future or they're connecting with families and you wanted to, whatever, I get it, right? But here's what, what's important about this story today is that we can, we can extract some godly principles about how to find true love. We can extract some really good principles of what God, the Bible says about finding good love, true love and healthy love. Amen? So this is what we're going to go through today. So in verses 1 and 2, and, and Abraham looks and he says, you know what? Uh, my, my son, you know, he needs a wife. And, and so in verse 3, he, he made the father's choice is what I call and he went to his servant and he said, I want you to swear to me and promise to the Lord that you're going to find a wife for my son. And the first thing he said, where to go? But let's just back up and say that Abraham saw the need. Abraham's the one that saw the need for Isaac. He's the one that looked down and said that, hey, my, my son needs a wife. How many know the Bible says that when Adam was created, God is the one that looked down and said, it's not good for man to be alone. God's the one that saw that need. God's the one that said, you know, that it's not good that you, I'm going to create a help me for you. So God saw that need. This is what I call the father's choice. It was God's choice. He was saying, look, and Abraham's a picture of, of God the father. And he's saying, look, he's saying, there's a need in your life and I want, amen, it to be met. Now, Isaac wasn't shopping around, and he wasn't, he wasn't on the dating scene back then, and, and uh, they, they, uh, his, his, uh, uh, his computer was down, and, and so he wasn't on, on these match sites. But, you know, he, he was just believing God, and so it was the father that said that. It was, it was God that looked down and said, it's not good that man be alone. How many know there's a difference between alone and being lonely? Amen? And, and God's the one that sees that need, and it's in his time, and it's with his choice. Amen, that God does these things. It's really good. And in Genesis, uh, in, in uh, chapter 2 and then in Matthew chapter 19, we read, 
Jesus went back to the beginning and talked about marriage and that how God brought the two together, how, how God brought, amen, Adam and Eve together, and that's God's plan, amen. So, you know, I, I believe that God will give you somebody in your life that will complement your life, not complicate your life, amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 19 that a father can give his sons houses and lands, but only the Lord can give him an understanding wife, amen, that the Lord can bring that love into his life, and the Lord can meet that need, amen. And so first of all, we see that Abraham saw the need. And then we see that the search begins. The search for this woman, for this, this love begins, right? And in verse 3, what does he say? He starts to search out by saying this, don't do this. That's what he starts out. Isn't that great? I mean, uh, have, have you had your uh, advice from your father or a peer or a mentor that said, I'm going to give you some good advice. Don't do this, right? That's how they start out. And so he starts out and he says, don't go to the Canaanites. So it's like, okay, where should I go? I'll tell you where not to go. That's what he's saying. I'll tell you what not to do, all right? The first thing you don't want to do, you don't want to go to the Canaanites. Why is that? Because the Canaanites were known for idol worship. They were known for worshiping all kinds of gods. They were uh, known for um, all kinds of perversion and all kinds of uh, things in their culture and society that were godless, really. And he said, don't go to the the Canaanites, right? And all through the Old Testament, you'll see that God warned his people, and he, he said, don't let your sons marry foreign wives or women. Don't let them get mixed up with foreign women. Now, what does that mean back then? Back then, that meant is that stay within uh, that, that kind of that bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because the moment you get outside that bloodline, they don't know God. They're, they're, they're lawless people. They worship idols. Amen. The Bible talks about Solomon. They had all these wives and concubines and everything, but at the end of it, his wives caused his heart to be led away from God. He ended up worshiping idols. Because he just, he just allowed himself to marry whoever and be with whoever and just go, just hook up with whoever. How many know the Bible makes it clear, don't do that. <laughs> so don't, don't go to the Canaanites is what he said. And the Bible says, and Paul kind of repeats this principle, and he talks about it, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And now I know there's a lot of people listening to this and saying, you know what, we weren't Christians when we got, uh, say, before we got saved and we were married, and it works out. We got a wonderful relationship. I get it. There's other people that say, you know what? When I started dating, I was a Christian, and I started dating this person that wasn't a Christian, and then and everything worked out, and, and we have a great marriage, and I get it. But how many know these are just basic principles? These are the basic principles, and there's two basic standard principles of relationships in the Word of God when it comes to finding true love, and that is, first of all, make sure it, they're of the Christian faith. That's a standard. That's just what basic principle, Christian faith, right? Amen. Make sure the Christian faith, and this is what he's saying. And then the other thing is, is practice abstinence before marriage. That's just a basic principle. And you say, well, Brother, Brother Matt, we've met, I've messed up before. I did this, and we did this, and we messed up. We're not, you know, I get it, amen? But how many know these are the basic guidelines and, and rules and, and, I should say, standards for relationships? And really what he's saying is when you don't go to the Canaanites and don't go to this group of people and don't do that, don't look for love there, what he's saying is make sure that you're loving God and following his principles. Make sure that the relationships that you get in your life aren't leading you away from God's principles and God's ways. Can anybody say amen? You know, there's a lot of people I talk to and it's like, I give the Lord every part of my life, but when it comes to love and relationships, I'm on my own. I'll figure it out. You know, and really what it is is I don't want the Lord to in, interrupt this. I don't want the Lord to get involved in this area of my life because I know he's going to tell me certain things that I can and cannot do, right? But how many know he says the very first thing, don't go there? <laughs> how many know you can all say that with me? Don't go there. When it comes to true love finding, you just got to say, don't go there, right? Amen. So I, I believe that, uh, yeah, well, we well, well, they got not young kids in the room. So let's, let's just go on. So he says, where to look? Okay, don't go there, but where to go? He said, go back in verse four, go to my country, go to my relatives. And specifically, you'll find this servant, if you track the story, you'll see that he actually goes right to this town that was known for the well. And the well was where everybody was, and you could find all these people there. And he knew that if I went to this well where Abraham's relatives were, and this is the country, and, and marry and, and find a wife for, for Isaac, I know that I'm going to find a good person, a good woman. I know I'm going to do that. So that's what the Bible says. And so he wasn't just out shopping. He wasn't just saying, you know what, I'm going to go try some T-shirts on, and I'm going to see which one I like the best. And then if I get worn out with that one, I'll just try on another one. How many know he wasn't shopping like that? <laughs> 
right? He was saying, look, I'm going to go to this, this place where I can find a quality person, a person that really is going to be the right fit, amen, finding true love. And so he's saying, look, I'm going to go to this well. And so the servant knew that he could find a good woman at this well. And uh, just a, a side note here that I just want to encourage you young people, find a person who hangs around the wellspring of living water. F- find somebody that loves kind of, kind of likes going to church a little bit and likes their family and, and loves God, right? Amen. So then he, he's, this is very interesting. The servant, before he even left, he, he took camels with him and he took uh, jewels and gifts with him and he, and he had something to offer. And when we, so many times when we go into looking for tr- finding true love, we're looking for someone else to meet our needs. We're looking for someone else to give us something. We're looking for other people to meet my needs and everything. But this idea that God has is that we approach relationships with something to give. He had something to offer. He had, he had, uh, you know, he was already prepared. Look, I'm going to give something. How many know that, you know, in, in, when, when you find true love, you give your heart away, you give your emotions away. I mean, you're fully committed, right, for the most part, or try to be, um, or want to be. But this is different. This is something that in his, he had something to offer. And I think a lot of times, a lot of young men would be better off, before you even get in a relationship, make sure that you're really in God. Before you get into a relationship, make sure you have quality to offer, something to offer, amen, that you're not just like, I'm going to hook up with this girl because she really look, looks good and everything. I think that we have to have something to offer, amen. And you know, his intentions were marriage, so because of that, his intentions were looking for a wife for Isaac, then his intentions were not selfish. His intentions were not about selfish dating and see who can hook up and just a one-night stand or a weekend visit. Come on, his, his intentions were good. His intentions were about committed relationships and lasting love. That's what it was about. And so because of that, he wasn't selfish. He had something to offer. Amen. Is that all right? I believe that in the world and according to the world, if you, if you date and, and do some things according to the world, it only teaches you to practice for divorce. But in the kingdom, God teaches us and he pra- that we practice for a lasting relationship, that we, we practice for healthy relationships. We practice for marriage, if you will, right? Come on, how many know God's word teaches you to pre- practice for long-lasting, healthy relationships? But in the world, it teaches you to practice for divorce because it's about what I can get now and who can I use. And, 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 and then when I'm done with you, I'm, you're like a used toothbrush. Now I'm going to get another one, right? Anybody? And, and so I believe that God's way is the best. But in, in verse 12 and 14, I want to bring this out right now. This is so important. In that the servant, as he's getting, getting in this place, I've got to pick this wife for Isaac, I, for you know, my, my master. I've got to do this. I, I mean, this is such a... All of a sudden, you see him in verse 12 and 14, he begins to pray. And he says, Lord, you've got to help me. How many know it's so important that we incorporate godly principles in our life when it comes to love and relationships? Lord, you got to lead me and guide me. Just like in Solomon tells his son, please be careful. Be on your guard. Watch out. Be, be aware. How many know you got to make right choices about wrong people sometimes? Teach your children to make right choices about wrong people. And if you, and, and a parent, that, that responsibility is on you, but it starts with, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I, I help. Lord, help me, lead me, guide me in this relationship, in, in my, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to play games. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go by my flesh. I don't want it to be some uh, temporary emotional thing that I go through. Lord, I want to find true love. And then we see the attraction. This is important, isn't it? What to look for, the attraction. Of course, I'm going to share more about this in the next week, but, but this is just from the story, the attraction. In verse 15, the servant said before he had finished praying, uh, Rebecca, this young lady, came, came out with her jar and her sh- on her shoulder. And verse 16, and the woman was very beautiful. She was a virgin. No man had known her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, came back up again. Now, back in those days, it was kind of down in a, like a, a pit sometimes. So the Bible says she actually had to go down, and she had to go down to the well, fill her jar up, take it back up. Maybe she had many jars. Coming back down, do it again. And it was a big process. And so he watched her. And the Bible says that one of the things that he caught his attention was she was good looking. She actually was beautiful, the Bible says. But there's something that caught the servant's attention beyond her looks. It was her character. He, he saw, in fact, Rebecca's name, her name means ensnaring beauty. It's like, watch out. 
She walks in a room, <gasps> right? But something, I mean, didn't, I mean, and, and, and here's a guy, right? This servant, he's probably single, right? So he's, he's looking at Rebecca. Instead of just staring, you know, his mouth open, like, uh, you know, he saw something. You know why? Because he was looking for something different. He wasn't just looking what attracted him. He wasn't just looking for that, amen, just what appealed to him. And just that, he was looking at something deeper and he saw something, it's called character. He saw something that even though she was beautiful, the Bible says that he saw some things about her and somehow he knew about it. That's what the Bible says. He knew about her personal life. He knew about who she was and, and just by watching her. How many know you can learn a lot by just watching somebody, amen, Right? So the Bible says that we shouldn't judge by the outward, but, but we should judge by the heart. And so for some reason, this guy saw character. He saw that she was not just beautiful, that's great, but wow, this, this, her character went beyond this. It went beyond, this is what made her beautiful. This is what really was attractive to him, was her character. No man had known her. She was responsible. She was surrounded by women like her. She was working. She was, she was industrious, as, as, as uh, you know, Proverbs 31 says this kind of woman is. And, and she was just really about, she had purpose. She was about getting the job done. That's what she was. And so there was something about her that he saw this character. But a little bit further about her is that she had good works. She was full of good works. It was her actions. It was the fruit of her life. How many of the Bible says don't just judge people on the outwards, judge by their fruit? What is the fruit of people's lives? What is, what is the evidence? that What are they producing in their life? Are they producing hatred and fighting and jealousy and anger and lust? Are they producing gentleness and love and peace and joy? The Bible says judge by the fruit, not just by the leaves. Come on, right? Amen. And so she was full of good works. This is the kind of girl she was. In verse 19, after she had, she actually, the, the servant asked her for a drink. She gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, you know what? I'm going to draw water for your camels too. So it was his and maybe a couple others and 10 more. So I don't know, camels drink a lot, they say, right? So here she was, she's just not like willing to do, give him a drink. She's, she's willing to go the extra mile and she's willing, she's, she's a servant, right? She, sir, she just, that's who she is. She's just full of good works. Yeah, sure, I'll do it. And she quickly emptied her jar, the Bible says, into the trough, and she ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all the camels. Think about it. That's a lot of work, isn't it? And this is just a servant's heart. She, was, she wasn't pretending to be somebody. She didn't know who the servant was, and so she wasn't pretending to be somebody to impress him. It's just who she was. I mean, that's, that's character. That's integrity. It's just who she was. It wasn't she was put, putting all the best makeup on and going out and do this and doing that because, oh, man, I'm going to, I mean, if I can just get his attention. Right? No, it's like that's who she was. She just was this servant. She just was this person. She just, just it came right out. I mean, she just loved her family. She loved people. She just was, uh, come on, she was a servant. And that's what it means. You know, the Bible says that kindness makes a man attractive. And all the guys said amen. So we're going to give her be kind afterwards as much as we can. Amen. We, know all the, uh, we need all the kindness uh, we can get. But the Bible says also about young women, it says in 1 Timothy, Paul addressed, and he said, let the young women be dressed with good works. In other words, let that be the thing that you see about them and notice about them that, that really goes before them and is the loudest about them and really is the story of their life is that good works, that servant attitude, that hardworking and willing and loving other people. Come on, somebody. Amen. Not pretending to be somebody they're not, but to be who they are in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I like this quote that we used to say years ago, and many have heard it before, but instead of finding the right person, be the right person. Instead of trying to find the right person, work on being the right person. Amen. And that, that really goes that way. But let's meet Rebecca a little bit. Just look at her. And, and, and this, how what made her so great is that um, when the servant had told Rebecca, hey, I'm here on a mission, and I'm, I'm Abraham's servant. I mean, everybody knew Abraham. I mean, this is a big deal, right? And uh, he said, this is why I'm here. Well, the Bible makes it clear that there's three things about her that were so amazing that are, it's really a good principle to follow in finding true love and finding what to look for in finding true love. In other words, she was willing to go. The verse 57 says her family heard about what, ha what was happening, and they asked her, and they brought her in, they asked her, do you want to do this? Is this something you want to do? I mean, no, she wasn't forced to do it. It's her choice. 
Amen? It wasn't like she was just uh, caught in this relationship and she couldn't get out of it and she was forced to be there and she, couldn't, she, didn't, she didn't know what to do. She couldn't make a decision. How I many know she was, it was her choice? And so they gave her the choice. Do you want to do this? And she said, I will go. I'll do it. I'll do what God wants me to do. If this is what God's will is for my life, I'm going to do it. If God wants me to, to, to go this route, that's what I'm going to do. If God wants me to act this way, that's what I'm going to do. If God w- wants me to have my relationships this way, that's what I'm going to do. She was willing to go. And then this, the other thing is she was ready to go. And, and I'm not talking necessarily about age. Well, I'm 18. I'm out of here. I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm grown up now. Right? Come on, how many know that doesn't mean mature? But, but she was just ready to go. She, she, the Bible makes it clear that it wasn't out of selfishness or rebellion to leave her family. I'm out of here. I'm done you know, giving camels water. Like, I've done enough work for you all. Like, I'm done. No, the Bible makes it clear. In her heart, she was ready to go. She was prepared. There was things about it that's like, okay, you're ready for this. And then the third thing I liked about her and really love actually about her is that she wanted a blessing from her family. The Bible says that they blessed Rebecca and they blessed her in a way that they, they said, you know, you're going you're gonna to be blessed and you're going to have uh, all these blessings from the Lord and you're going to do this. How many know it's important that she wanted a blessing from her family? That she sought after a blessing. Now, some of us don't have that opportunity and some of our parents, we don't really, maybe we're really not in touch with or they could care less who we're with or what we do. Amen. But it's important to get a blessing, isn't it? It's important that we do things not because out of rebellion or we do it out of because, I, because I'm leading my own life or this is what I want. It's because this is what God wants. This is good. This is, I want the blessing of the Lord. I want, I want godly counsel on this. I, I really want to make sure I'm doing the right thing about this. How many of that's important in finding true love, right? And then she wanted the blessing. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. And the servant I love this about the servant is after she said yes, she's willing to go and she got the blessing. This is what's neat is the servant gave her all these jewels. Now she had no idea that she was going to be rich in a moment. She didn't know what she was getting into. She didn't know what God had for her, but she was just willing to go and say yes to the Lord's will. And then he gave her all these gifts and and lavished her with all these things. I mean, that's pretty good right there. I know a lot of women might say, you know what? I'm good. I got all these gifts. I really don't need to be married right now. In fact, I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to go to um, whatever Vegas was back then. And I'm going to do that and and I'm going to do something else. And, and, but you know, there was a reward for doing what's right. That's really what it speaks to me, that there was a reward for her for doing what was right. When she said, you know what, I'm not going to be led by, or I'm not going to follow the world system. I'm not going to be led by my emotions. I'm going to make the right choices. I'm going to, I'm going to date who God wants me to be with and, and the right things. And I'm going to do these things. You know, there was a blessing and a reward for, for doing right. How many know there's a reward for doing what's right? Amen. And it might cost you some things, and it might be a sacrifice, and it might be you might have to say no to a lot of things. And, and for young people, you might have to be made fun of for a little bit. You might have to, uh, people kind of talk behind your back in, in the cafeteria or in the locker room, make fun of you a little bit. But it's all right because there's a reward from God for doing what's right. Amen. Come on. Come on, you, you talk to the, to the most popular people and you talk to the most beautiful girls in high school, after high school, it's just not really good for most of them. It doesn't turn out the best for them. Come on, somebody, man. People who you thought you were intimidated by and you just wanted to do what they did and want to be accepted by them. How many know you ever meet them after high school sometimes? It's like, ooh, wow, I'm glad I wasn't, didn't go that, that path with them, right? How many were there, right? And you just thought, wow, if I could just be that, that you know, whatever. Amen. And, and then you say, Lord, I did the Lord's way and I did it the best and he rewarded me for it. And then finally, look at the connection. I love this connection. The Bible says that when, when she said yes and willing to go, got the blessing and made her way towards Isaac, the Bible says that Isaac was ready. I mean, this was a young man that had been prepared. This was a young man that had been through some things and he wasn't just foolish. He wasn't running around uh, you know, in town and, and, and just kind of like, you know, uh, hooking up with all the girls in town. This guy was focused. He had purpose. He was responsible and he was godly. He loved God. And he, his, his, his motive really was about the Lord. His motive was about 
the good things that God had for him. The Bible says in verse 63 that he went out into the field in the evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw the camels approaching. He saw that caravan coming. Amen. So he was ready. And this, he was in a place where, amen, that he wasn't setting himself up for foolish decisions, for wrong decisions. Amen. He was in a place where maybe he really kind of uh, really took the advice of his father and said, you know what, you're a young man and you've got your, your life ahead of you. Don't use it and waste your time and be foolish with it. Maybe he listened to his dad. Maybe he, maybe he saw other young men in, in, in his life that really were an example to him and other people in his life said, you know what, my, my friends at school are doing this, but man, the, the real men, the true men, the men that I want to be like, this is what they're doing. Amen. And so the Bible says he was in this field and he saw, you know, the Bible talks about Adam before uh, Eve came along. The Bible says that Adam was busy ministering before the Lord. He was busy with God's work. He was busy. He was so busy with what God had for him, and he was busy about what God told him to do. Amen. How many of that's good? Just get busy on it. My, my, my dad used to say this, uh, and some of you know what's coming. My dad used to say this all the time about Jesus. Amen. When he was 12, he told his parents, he said, I've got to be about the father's business. And my dad always used to say, if you're about the father's business, you won't be about monkey business. That's what my dad used to say. You got to know my dad. Anyways, right? And so if we're, we're focused on what God is doing and, 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 he, and all of a sudden we realize, wow, I'm, I'm complete in the Lord. I'm complete in my singleness and my, in my aloneness. I'm, I'm complete in God. And I'm not looking for a, a, a short-term uh, gratification, emotional high. I'm looking for love. I'm looking for true love. And I, and I want, amen, the Lord to lead me in this way. And so Isaac was ready. This is what he's saying. And then the other thing I want to point out about this, and we read it in our opening uh, text, is that there was honor in their relationship before there was marriage. There was honor between them. There was honor uh, in, in Rebecca, and she had this honor and this respect um, that was, was, was amazing. The Bible says even after she knew that she was going to get married, even though she knew and she saw Isaac for the first time and could have been love at first sight. It could have been, you know, he could have like, you know, oh my word and fainted a couple times and whatever. I don't know. And could have been that way. And he just couldn't talk and, and maybe she couldn't. But the Bible says that she veiled herself. Think about it. In verse 64, when she looked up and she saw him, she said, who is that? That's Isaac. And the Bible says she put a veil back over her face. And the Bible says in Proverbs that discretion and honor will keep you. There's something about being dis practicing discretion and honor in relationships that you just can't get and you just can't, you can't beat that. Come on. And when you practice respect and true love and, and the principles of love, there's something about it that enhances and enriches not just your character, but a relationship. Amen. Think about it. So there was this respect before romance, as we like to say. Amen. There was this discretion and honor that she had, that this, this respect for her body, respect for herself. There was this honor for him and this respect towards him and the relationship and what was about to happen. Think about it. Amen. And I believe that God calls us to, to have spirit-directed and God-honoring relationships. And so if we can teach our young people this and teach our children this, is that God wants you to have a God-honoring relationship. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a, you know, you just kind of like somebody a little bit. It's just this little, you know, puppy love or whatever. But it doesn't matter. We need to have God-honoring relationships. How many believe that? The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians that we need to walk holy and blameless before the Lord and, and that we need to put these things away from us and we need to practice holiness, true holiness in the fear of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. And then it goes on to say in 1 Corinthians that marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. It says that my, uh, uh, marriage is something that's honorable and, and the bed undefiled. Think about it. And I, and I used to think to myself, well, how does the bed get that way? How does the bed get undefiled? And what does that mean? It, it, does it after? No, it starts before you're married. Before you're married, you put these things into practice. Before you're married, you're an integral person and full of character and good works. And, and come on, somebody, amen, that you're really loving God with all your heart. And only when you love God with all your heart are you going to find true love. Because God is love. Amen? And you know, if you're doing things out of selfishness or out of lust, it's going to come out. It's gonna, it's, it's going to, you're going to see it. You're going to have the effects of that. It's not going to last. It's going to be damaging to other people, and it's going to destroy a lot of good things in your life that'll, that'll hurt your, your relationships in the future. Is that clear? Everybody, amen? I don't know. But, and finally, the last thing we see is the Father's will was fulfilled. When she came back and they met together, the Bible says, amen, that they, 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 that connection was that the Father's will 
was satisfied. The father's will was fulfilled. And I feel like that's what really this whole thing was about was Abraham said, I'm going to get a wife, my son Isaac. And, and in the end, that father's will was fulfilled. And I think that's what's so important about relationship is that we're walking in the things of the Lord, the will of God. And so we see that when Isaac followed the will of his father, he found the love that he needed. The Bible says that when uh, the, he had really kind of been through an emotional roller coaster in a hard place because he lost his mother. He really loved his mother, Sarah. She was a wonderful woman, a woman of faith, and just a, a powerful example in his life. And she died, and, and, he, and he really missed her. The Bible says that he really, really had this need in his life. But, but when he did the will of his father, when this was accomplished, this love, this part, was, this, this empty uh, part of his life, if you will, was, was fulfilled, and amen, was, was met. And I love that about the story. The father's will was fulfilled. Amen. How many believe that? And you follow the, the story of Isaac. He was in the lineage of Jesus. Did you ever notice that? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was in the lineage of Jesus. And he needed someone in his life to walk in the will of God with him. If he had married anybody else, and maybe they didn't want to do this, and they didn't want to do that, and they just wanted to, we, we just need to go, and we just need to, we don't need to do the will of God. We need to do something else. We need to do our own thing. Can you imagine? He'd be out of the lineage of Jesus. He'd be out of the will of God. He'd be out of the plan of God for his life. Think about it. Amen? And I, I love that about the story is that when it comes all down to it, it's really about, amen, doing it God's way, isn't it? Amen? How many believe that God wants us to find true love? How many that know that true love is in Jesus Christ and him alone? Anybody? Amen? This morning, I wonder if we can stand on our feet. And I just want to share this last verse. Verse 67, we read it before. The Bible says that Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother, Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This was a lasting relationship. This relationship lasted their whole life. This was something that was healthy. And you say, well, I wouldn't do it that way. I mean, she never met him. I mean, it was like a blind date. I mean, my goodness, that never works out, right? Again, let's, let's put all that aside. Let's work on the principles and focus on the principles. There was a lasting relationship here. She filled the gaps. You know, I, I often think about, if you ever followed the, the, the movies of, of Rocky, one of, the things that, one of the things that Rocky said when he's asked, why would you marry Adrian? Why would you marry this girl? This, you know, she's kind of a nerdy girl. Why would you? And he said, I got gaps. She's got gaps. We all got gaps. She just fills the gaps. Amen. How many know there's this, in Isaac's life, you could say, she filled this gap. You know, she didn't complete him, even though we like to say that you complete me, but she didn't complete him, but she strengthened his completion in the Lord. She strengthened the things in his life that he was needing and he was, he was looking for that he was really desperate for. She was the one that brought that complimenting into his life, brought that, that gap that was filled in his life. Amen. And I love that about this story because that's finding true love, and he found the love that he needed. You know, a lot of people, uh, as I talk about relationships and finding true love, especially young people, it's like, uh, of course, they're not thinking about marriage, but I believe it's important that they practice principles that really set them up for successful relationships, amen? But you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, Brother Matt, I, I had this vision, I had this dream about uh, the, you know, who I'm gonna be with and who I wanna marry. I'm waiting for a prophecy from the Lord and, and all that. How many know... That's, that's okay, that's good, but they should never create a relationship for you. They should only confirm what God has for you. Never forget, and I was reminded of it this last week, um, I think it was in, when we were engaged, my wife and I were engaged, we had dated for three and a half years, we got engaged, and I'll never forget I, the first time that I really had this God witness, I mean like, like God witness, because up to that point I was like hoping that I would see this vision of who I was gonna marry, right? As a young teenager, I'll never forget just closing my eyes and thinking, all right, show me. Who is she? Where does she live? Right now, right? I was thinking, God, you know everything. You know the future. You know I'm going to marry. Just show me right now, right? I do that, honestly. It's embarrassing, though. Now that I said it, I hear how ridiculous that is. And I see all the teenagers trying closing their eyes right now. No, I'm just kidding. Right? Show me, God. Who is she? Right? But I'll never forget being here, and we had dated in three and a half years. I loved her personality, everything. It was just great. She loved God. I was, I mean, just, it was awesome. We were having a great time. We got engaged, and I'll never forget getting ready for work and opened up the book of Proverbs. I was just reading one day, and I'll never forget the Lord 
just really showed me this. We can call it a vision, whatever you want to call it. But I saw us in this apartment and I saw us, we were newly married and we were happy and, and uh, I'll never forget, someone came to the door and we, my wife had made a, uh, a pie or a cake for them and we, they came in and we were having a great time and I thought, this is great. We're having a great time and I just felt like the Lord speak to me and said, you're on track on track. You're going the right way. This is it. This is the right one. You made the right choice, right? And you know, when, when we got married, this is honest to God truth. This, when we got married, our first apartment was two doors down from where I had the dream of where I saw that apartment. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I thought, wow, that's really good. And how many know God confirms those things? And some of us want that confirmation. We want that leading of the Holy Spirit. But you know, if you just follow biblical principles and, and those that are around you and follow the godly examples in your life, God will confirm his word over and over again. Maybe you're in a relationship and you said, Lord, I need this confirmed. Don't worry. God will confirm it. Amen? But for the rest of us, I believe like Solomon was tell- telling Rehoboam, we need to go by principles and wisdom, common sense, and just love God with all our heart. Come on. Practice agape love and, and just follow the things of the Lord and God will lead us to that lasting, true love. Amen? How many can lift your hand to heaven and say, in Jesus Christ, I found true love. Amen. And Jesus has taught me how to love. He's the one that has given me the principles. How he loved me, he's taught me how to love other people. And and he's healed me in relationships that were broken. He's healed me in areas that were out of place and dysfunctional. He's, He's healed me of concepts. He's just done such a wonderful thing in my life. And I thank you, Lord, for that. How many can say, Lord, I thank you for that today? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful love story that we see in Genesis 24 of Isaac and Rebecca. And and Lord, there's just so many principles there that we could extract and say, Lord, we can make this work in our life. We can practice this in our life, in our time, in our day. And it really does work because there's principles in your word that are timeless and endless. And they just work over and over and over again in each generation, Lord. So first of all, I pray for the young people. I pray for teenagers in this room and young adults, Lord, who are uh, just so pressured in our culture and our society like never before. I feel like they're more pressured than when I was growing up, Lord. There's more, there's more pressure to conform to the system of this world and the, and the way that they do things and the ideology and the philosophy of love in this world without God. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for courage that they would be able to say, no, I'm going God's way. I'm going to do it God's way. No matter what it costs me, no matter what my friends say, I'm going to do it God's way. And I'm going to find true love in Jesus Christ and the way God wants me to find true love. Amen. We pray for those who are, amen, maybe praying for a a spouse and, and really searching and saying, Lord, I feel time and I really want to date and I really want to find true love in my life. I pray that, Lord, you would lead them and you would guide them and, Lord, they would just make those right connections and, Lord, there would be that, uh, just that attraction and connection, Lord, in the Lord for them, Lord, and we just pray that they would find true love in God. And so, Lord, we just pray for the rest of us, amen, that we would continue to walk in love, walk in the principles of love and what you have for us, Lord. And, Father, may we leave this building today saying, Lord, I just want to thank you for the way that you've loved me. It's been so, so amazing and so uh, outstanding. I, I just It just changed me. And so, Lord, I pray that we would walk in love as we leave this place. And we give you all, give you all the glory, give you all the praise. For in, the, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hey, everyone. This is Anthony. Thank you for joining us at River Valley Church. It's our hope and prayer that this message blesses and encourages you in your walk with Jesus. If it's done that today, we ask that you like this message and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to click that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that's posted. If God's place is on your heart to give today, there's a link in the description where you can get all of that information. We ask that you also follow our social channels here at River Valley Church so that you can stay connected with everything that's happening here at the church and also in our community. Most importantly, if you need prayer, we ask that you click on the next step section of our website where you'll find a prayer request form and you can fill out as much or as little as you want. But we've got some awesome men and women who are ready to stand with you in your time of need. That's all for today. Thank you again for joining us at River Valley Church. Have a great week. God bless.